Hello and welcome to a, another quarantine edition of Obscura Undead. I'm Azzy. I'm Mouse. And uh, we had a brief week off. Was it a week? It feels like two weeks. It was just one week. Uh, just last week. Yeah. Uh, but we are back to talk about a little bit of news on uh, kind of like a, a broad high level sort of way, um, so nothing super specific, uh, and we then want to do something a little bit different, and kind of do a radio show style mix for you. Sure. Sure. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, so, I guess the first thing we should talk about is, uh, there's, a, there's this article floating around, basically, uh, Mouse calls it worry bait. It's it's beyond clickbait. So the title of the article says, 90% of independent music videos could close due to COVID-19. And like a lot of times we don't have time to read a whole article. We just get that tidbit of news and move on with our day. And it's just one more thing to worry about. But the article goes into um, a little bit more of some depth. There is a survey conducted by the National Independent Venue Association. And they have members that join their association. They have about 2,000 members in, across 50 states. 90% of those members said that they may be forced to cease operations permanently if the shutdown lasts longer than six months and if there's no federal support provided. So that's a lot of ifs for just the members of this association. Right, so it isn't Not as worrisome as the title suggests? I mean, uh, funds devoted to sort of like business bailouts haven't been super a lot through like the CARES Act. Um, I think in Hillsborough County, which is where Tampa is located and the castle is located, businesses, I think, I don't know if nightclubs are included. Not yet. We, we're, we're in phase two in Tampa. We just started. And phase two allows for the opening of bars, strip clubs, I believe, um, and some other places outside of restaurants because restaurants were already in phase one. Mm -hmm. Limited capacity, social distancing rules apply. Nightclubs are part of phase three. Right, but, the, uh, but like I'm not even talking phases, I'm talking about CARES Act relief funding. Oh. Um, I don't recall if nightclubs are eligible. I know that bars are, but Hillsborough County is only um, allocating like $1,000 per business. What? Yeah, which is weird because uh, Pinellas County, another county in like the Tampa Bay area, is doing 5000 per business. So um, it, basically the whole point of me, me bringing this up is because there's not enough money being funneled into like small business bailouts. That um, is sad. And that could definitely affect independent venues. And we have plenty of them here in Tampa. Right. Like and where our concerts are held. I, I know that um, in some cities, businesses like golf clubs and stuff like that that have failed or places that have uh, hosted goth nights have moved to smaller venues like they lost the rent on one place and moved to a smaller venue already during covid mm -hmm. so we make see a downsizing so really um not sure i did see some things happening um locally where there were um people who lost their goth clubs because the venues had to have to move on to um, more popular scenes or to provide more popular nights, um, which excludes the goth nights. And um, I was suggesting that as a community, you can get your friends all together to plan out showing up at the same time. Say it's once a month or once every two months and then go to the venue and say, listen, we're all gonna show up on this particular night, we are going to be your business. Can we do a once a month, once a quarter goth night? Talk to your community. Kind of like talk a to your friends. Hostile friend, goth to... takeover. Do it, yes, actually, because all they care about is bodies in the club. And the reason that a lot of goth nights don't succeed is 
people are like, oh, it's there every week. I'll just show up whenever. And they do, but there's not enough of us and we don't show up at the same time. I know, and I think that that's going to kind of be a big issue is because goth nights aren't really super marketable in most places um, to begin with. So it's it's going to be one of the ones that you know ends up getting dropped if a venue is looking to do more. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many times have you know we been dropped from a venue even when things are good? I'm because so used the goth to night doesn't perform. So as well used to be like, dropped because some other yeah. group is going to be because more like, supportive. Karaoke uh, does way better than we do. Of course, yeah. yeah. Or um, um, football Monday nights. You know all the. Uh, the bro dudes with their beers and yelling at the TV. Yeah. Not gonna name which venue that was. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we know we know exactly what it's like. But at the same time, everybody is having to readjust their lives to survive. And this is how we could do it. We just need to cooperate and coordinate. I know it, I know the structure of it sounds easy enough, but it's it's gonna it would be hard to I thought it's lost but supposed you just to be like loners and shit. Yeah, like imagine if we reached out to our entire circle and we're like, okay, here's the date. We all show up and we're gonna do a hostile goth goth wait, hostile goth takeover <laughs> for this venue. Yeah. Then you know. Huh. Yeah, that could work. But Just um, I, I think the castle is, is going to be fine. I think that uh, when they open their doors, they're kind of going to get mobbed. People oh, are yes. already like champing at the bit, like waiting. They're like for the ready castle. to break the doors down. I don't think I've gone like a single day in the last like three weeks where at least four people aren't posting. Like, when's the castle opening up? Are you guys open yet? Are you guys opening in phase two? When are you opening? You'll notice that it's none of the goths that are asking this. Yeah, I know. I noticed. Now we're just sort of chilling out. Waiting. We are. We're sitting back and we're like, all right, let the chaos begin. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll be back here. Let me know when it works out. Hey, like, it'll be fine. Worry bait. Yeah, so that that article is is, is largely worry bait. Um, but... Yeah, who knows. I, I am genuinely concerned that we may end up, end up in a situation where, like, 90% of independent music venues close. It just... It's so upsetting though because if they could hold out a little bit longer until they open, every single bar and restaurant is going to make a killing because people are so tired of being home. They're gonna be going out for the next six months. You could recoup your losses if you plan it out, you prepare, and you do your marketing correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, but I'll take your word. I really don't know. But I I think that people will end up going out in a lot of places in force and spending all of their, you know, hard-saved money. It's kind of sad because all of this is happening just because landlords don't want to halt their rent. I mean, even in places with, um, does, I know that some places have, like, eviction states where they can't actually evict anyone, but I don't know if that applies to, like, business rentals. Huh. I hadn't thought of that. I don't know. You know, if we wanted to, we can talk to some local business owners and find out. But it all just makes me worry. Yeah. So um, when things open up, when you feel safe doing so, and you feel as though the business is doing everything they can to halt the spread, if you absolutely need to go out, I guess, support your businesses. Oh, the Falcon is opening, actually. Next week. The There's Falcon a is normal, a bar. Uh, normal hours on Monday. The Falcon is a bar that we like to go to in Orlando. Cool. Yeah. So, that's that, that's that piece of news that we've seen circulating a lot. Um, another one that we have seen circulating a lot uh, is... So, Twitch um, started getting some DMCA uh, takedowns and, and mutings and stuff like this of video game streamers back catalog of videos 
and it kind of got high profile, ended up in like some more majorish like news sources, not like CNN or anything like that, but you know, like in those circles. And uh, people actually, I think, started finally paying attention to uh, Twitch's end user agreement license, license agreement, whichever way those words go and are noticing that uh, Twitch has this very specific no DJ policy. Yeah, Twitch has always had this. We've been ignoring it. But what is worrisome is that it does seem as though Twitch is starting to crack down on music streams. Uh, specifically, one of the big groups that is issuing these DMCA takedowns is uh, Warner Brothers Media Group, which is weird because they were just like two months ago releasing claims on like Facebook videos. Oh, they always release claims very late. Like I, I got a released claim from something I had posted over a year ago. <laughs> uh, and it's just, there are things in there that I think are programmed. I think oh, no, they- Oh it's, no, it's, it's bots. It absolutely, it's absolutely is bots. Yeah, so there are, there are things that get released, mm -hmm. um, but that's completely separate from DMCA takedowns and DMCA stands for Digital Millennium Copyright Act, um, which is the law that governs copyrighted material online. Um, so what happened was there were um, a couple of high profile streamers who complained that there were some copyright strikes that came in for material uh, background material on their content that was from as far back as 2017. Yeah. I mean, there were, there was one case where I saw where someone was saying that they, that what happened was like all of their previous uploaded videos, they got a couple of copyright strikes and all of their uploaded videos got pulled down by the platform. I don't know if that was- I've, I've not seen that. Um, and I've, I've looked into this extensively because it is affecting people's confidence in, um, in streaming on Twitch. Yeah. But what I have seen is there are a lot of people who have a, a huge collection of videos on Twitch. So they've either uploaded them or they were live at the time. Um, partners. These are, are people who have um, a lot of followers and everything. So they have 100,000 videos on Twitch. They're concerned that more copyright strikes could happen and that they may have to take these down rather than fishing through them. Right. So that was the issue, not that Twitch has taken those down. Um, the two people that complained, I know it sounds like a lot because we keep seeing this the same types of articles circ circulated. Um, the two people that complained were um, were affected by the two strikes, which of course is very scary to get two strikes all of a sudden because um, in a lot of cases, if you get three, you're permanently banned mm -hmm. from Twitch. Right. So that was, that was the concern. Um, so uh, there is a comment from Dea saying that a band she knows had a video taken down on YouTube because of Warner Brothers, despite them not being on a Warner Brothers label or covering any Warner Brothers material or referencing any Warner Brothers stuff. And the video was like three to four years old. Uh, I swear it has to be who they distro through. It could be, absolutely, because they're way huger than we, when, than we, than we think about. Yeah. Um, I've had problems with um, a visual on a video um, where I had uploaded a clip of an old movie and the movie wasn't copyrighted, but somebody in a metal band had copyrighted this clip for their material. And even though the video that I had put on YouTube had nothing associated with this metal band, it still gets copyright strike because they copyrighted it. There's all kinds of weirdness. You can't... Wait, so they copyrighted something in public domain? Uh, no, it wasn't public. It wasn't that old. It wasn't public domain. It was just a clip from a video that I knew the movie wasn't copy. What didn't... I knew that I could upload pieces from the movie and not have a problem because I had done it before. Oh, okay. But this metal band has used either a sample or like one time I did it with um, the Hellraiser movie. Mm -hmm. 
And one time I did it with Candyman movie. These are like horror movies because I make really good visuals. Um, and and metal bands have not metal. I don't want to I don't want to call out metal bands, but I'm just saying a genre that's not related to what I was doing um, had copyrighted either a sound sample or a visual clip as their own. And they can get a copyright on anything. I don't know how, but they did. Mm -hmm. And so that was how I got the copyright issue. Um, there's all kinds of things like that. And Warner Brothers, like you said, they could just have been distributing things. Um, there's times when you could upload like a Japanese band and they're not under Warner Brothers in America, but they are in Japan, you know, stuff like that. Mm. Um, but nobody wants to take the time to learn the copyright law, so they just ditch. Well, copyright law is really complicated because it's different on the internet, it's different country by country, it's different what's included underneath it. And um, it's new, so it changes all the time. Yeah, copyright it's just law like... is really, really, really complicated. Um, so a I love it. Of... I'm kind of fascinated by it. Because <laughs> so... it's, it's new territory, you know? Yeah, so a lot of um, DJs and such are choosing to sort of dip off of Twitch and move over to Mixcloud Live, which does allow DJs to do it uh, legally because you essentially pay for a license. And we're really surprised that Twitch hasn't done something like this already, that they haven't noticed that DJs have been just fucking all over their like platform yeah and... i wonder what that is about it could be that they don't want to pay the um the licensing to the bands it could open them up to like a whole number money of liability issues now. who knows everybody jumping on there yeah i don't know it, it could be that the circulation of these articles or the um the the fact that they released these copyright strikes to people was just a warning shot to to get people off of there who well, are constantly spinning copyrighted music but we are not it's, it's possible well we are spinning copyrighted music technically everything is copyrighted the second that you produce it but um so apparently it's not twitch actually issuing these the you know the copyright strikes it's uh you know the label the r-i-a-a -A. it's it's the recording industry association of america yeah and so I've seen some speculation with people saying, well, maybe, maybe if um, we don't archive any of our stuff or upload any past videos or only keep our videos live, maybe it'll be okay. And that's what we've seen ten uh, points that direction because there haven't been any live takedowns. YouTube does live takedowns. Um, yeah. Facebook does kind of by limiting streams. Twitch, though, however, does not do live takedowns, but they do have the capability to do so. They just haven't exercised it. Mm hmm Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we've talked about Mixcloud Live before, and so that's why a lot of DJs, uh, you may see them moving over to Mixcloud Live in the near future. Um, but, to be honest, Mixcloud Live still hasn't gotten their shit together, in my opinion. It's... Perfect. Twitch has just been kind of a nice outlet, so hey, who knows? Uh, we'll see. Um, in the meantime, we kind of plan on sticking with Twitch until Twitch kills us, or until we have sufficient reason to actually move off the platform. Um, kind of like how we were trying really hard to stick with Facebook at the beginning until Facebook kind of forced us off the platform by shortening our streams to like 30 minutes, which really sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, expect to Still see that. Until further notice. Yeah. Um, and then we have the very last topic that we want to talk on. Mouse, would you like to introduce it? I feel like I've been talking too much. Oh no, you have not been talking too much. <laughs> What am I introducing? Uh, so we are going to now move into something that we've never done before, but we're going to try and it might not work. So the 10 of you are going to be our guinea pigs. 10? We have 10 people listening to us? Yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so 
So, um, it's been a very important week, a uh, couple of weeks, and um, the goth scene as a whole is dominated by uh, non people of color. Um, we have white personalities, white faces, we have all kinds of colors, but we're not seeing enough exposure of some bands and we wanted to play some of them. Mm -hmm. So we have a nifty list of bands that have um, people of color, black members, um, or the whole band could be um, of color. And we're going to introduce them and play some tracks. Yeah, so we've never done this before. Um, and we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to try to transition to mute us. So if for some reason this doesn't work, I do apologize if you can hear us talking. Uh, but I'm going to transition to playing a bunch of random obscure and dead logos with a track over it. So the first band that uh, I'm going to attempt to do this with is a band called None of Your Concern. Are you gonna play Cinnamon? I'm gonna play Cinnamon. Cinnamon? Yeah. Cinnamon? Out of Chicago, Illinois. This is a dark wave kind of EBM duo. They they kind of hit like a widish range of sounds. So there's some songs I don't like because they're more EBM. And there's some songs that I really like because they are more uh, dark wave. But I'm going to play Cinnamon off of their most recent album, Primer, which came out in April of this year.
success. Hi, Mouse. Hi. <laughs> So I couldn't figure out how to listen to the song at first, and then I, I figured it out. Did you just so I missed the beginning of the song. Thank did, you. Did you just go to Twitch? So um, just one more time. That was a band called None of Your Concern. You can find their album Primer. Well, I guess it's like a seven-track long EP. Uh, this, this was just released uh, in April. Right, and they do have a more recent single out called Oppression. Oh, um, God! And we didn't play that one, that. but the track Oppression, all proceeds from that track that they make uh, are being donated to the Black and Brown Business Relief Fund. That's awesome. Yeah. Excellent. And um, that song, I like the... I like the description text on it. The song is meant to express the thoughts and emotions that myself and many of my POC folk have had to process and work through on a daily basis. I mean, I should have played that one. It's just, I really do love the track Cinnamon. It's better for people to go listen to it and buy it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So What's next, uh, the next band that we are going to play is another duo and kind of more of a gothy dark wave vibe, Pitch After Dark, um, which is out of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. They were just formed this year, and they're, they're fantastic. I need to decide which track I want to play. I just keep playing the first track over and over. I, I don't know if the rest of them were great. I'm sure they we'll were. We'll but... Trapped Inside then. So this is... Pitch After Dark, Trapped Inside, off of their EP, Pitch After Dark. I want to dance the way we did before we were all trapped inside I want to dance the way we did before we were all We were all trapped inside Now here we are, along for the ride Into the unknown, shelter and hide Is what we do to survive, living in isolation Trapped inside I want to dance the way we did before we were all trapped inside I want to dance the way we did before we were all We were all trapped inside Forced to divide, alone in the room And day after day I am missing you My mind going wild, need something to do just waiting for this ordeal to be through inside, locked inside, trying to stay alive, dealing with my emotions every day and night, on the edge of madness, can't go to the show, because the music has stopped and now I'm all alone, trapped inside, 
Trapped inside Trapped inside So that was Pitch After Dark, Trapped Inside, and the lyrics are indeed very sad. Um, quarantine sad. You know, I want to dance the way we did before we were all trapped inside. Oh my god. That's... Yeah. Um, so this is a relatively new project, and I am really looking forward to whatever else they come out with, because goddamn, there is so much potential. I love it. Um, the... This album just came out, too. It's brand new. Brand, brand, brand new. Brand new. Um, May... 16th. (laughs) Thank you. May 16th. No, I couldn't. I really couldn't. Thank you. All right, so the next band that we're going to play is probably one that you are all much more familiar with. Uh, This is a friend of ours out of Louisville, Lovell, Kentucky, Uh, Scary Black, and um, I'm going to play a track off of Are You Afraid of the Dark, which is um, the most recent album from December 26th. 2019, and mm, I think I want to play just my favorite track off the whole album. What? Uh, Because remember we talked about our different opinions on which ones we liked? Oh, yeah, no, I really like You and I Are Not the Same. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, we are on the same page. Because the the close uh, runner-up was the um, Stay Out of My Lane or something. Oh, Stay in Your Lane, Stay in your lane, yeah. I just remember driving and I'm like singing it. But yeah. Yeah. No. You and I are not the same. Mm -hmm. So this is Scary Black. You and I are not the same. And this is a solo project. Oh, 
So that was Scary Black, I Will Crawl, and not I Will Crawl Inside Your Heart and Die. That's the next track that I was trying to play. <laughs> Oops. That was, not quite. You and I are not the same. Well, one thing I like about Scary Black is that all the song titles are really long. <laughs> yes. Very long. Um, but that is off of Are You Afraid of the Dark from last December. It was kind of like a late Christmas present. December. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess keeping in the spirit of dark wave solo projects, this next band is from Cleveland, Ohio, and it is Nate Eberhardt's band Nature, in all caps. Nature, that's the guy I was trying to remember earlier. <laughs> oh, well, he was on the list. Nature, that's the guy. Right, and he has an EP out from March, but a single from this past May, on May 29th, called Tears. with tears and this has all been some really pretty music but I'm thinking maybe we gotta get a little harder like the ire like the ire or <laughs> bastet but because you said the ire I'll play the ire first I just I'm typed in the ire first the as ire as again. that's not at all what I meant to type in what did you even type? Where did you type? 
<laughs> uh, Google. <laughs> um, so the Ire is a band out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They released their uh, demo titled Demo um, in January of 2019. Oh gosh, they have so many good songs. Like I love the entire demo. It's really rough and it's just fantastic. And I think we reviewed this. Was it Torch Song? I don't want to play Torch Song. I was thinking that I might play Catabasis. Catabasis. All right. So, The Ire with Catabasis. <laughs> was the ire with their song catabasis which i'm realizing um i need to grab the link clickety clickety clackety um, and we can drop it in youtube as well so now i have both the youtube and the twitch open <laughs> which is confusing but we can do that we can do this 
Yeah, we haven't seen anything from the ire in over a year, which I hope that means we don't ever see anything from the ire because even my husband loves this band. They're fantastic. All right. <laughs> the next band that I'm going to play is Bastet from Oakland, California. So they are dark punk and um, I don't know, their, their band camp poetry says that their songs represent internal, external war, facing duality, self-awareness, intention, action, survival, personal experiences, and the balance for balanced in the battle for balanced humane autonomy. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but I'm going to play their latest single in Star, which was released on February 7th of this year. So enjoy. All right.
really enjoyed that. Um, I, I have to go listen to their other um, releases because mm-hmm. I'm not sure just from that one song. It doesn't sound as punk as I thought they, they were going to get. No, they, they, yeah, no, they have other more. They're spooky witchy. Tracks. Well, have you seen like the images? Like they kind of look spooky witchy. I mean, I think it's yeah, the there's, sword um, and like there's... the flowing cloth. Yeah, and um, they have one where they're wearing like the goth sun hats. <laughs> it's so yeah. cute. I didn't realize I didn't own this track, so now I do. Now I do. Thank you, band camp. I love you. You're my favorite. All right. So, um, keeping in the vein with California, the next band that we are going to play is The Wraith from Los Angeles. Um, I always confuse what, like, alternative rock group one of these guys is from. Lost Tribe. No, no, it's, it's like some big one, and I can never remember because it's not. Oh, oh, you mean it's... after that. I don't know, it's it was something somewhere. stupid. It said in their, um, <laughs> I thought it was in their band camp poetry, no? Uh... I don't know. They have two different Bandcamp accounts. Um, one what is the, the Wraith Punk. The other one is the Wraith uh, SL. But we are of- going to play um, a track off of their latest uh, their latest album, which was released November 29th, 2019, Gloom Ballet. Um, and I think I'm going to play the track that uh, is requested. And that is Ballad of Aeon. Enjoy. Shout first of 
house. Oops, was I not on mute the whole time? No, you were totally muted. It's just I came back and you're like doing something weird with your chair. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was too short. <laughs> I have this thing behind me. Mm. All right, so I think that we will play two more bands and then sign off. <laughs> so uh, the last two bands are going to be uh, two bands that are no longer making music. Um, so the, oh gosh, the, the big choice is deciding which order to play them in. Hmm. It depends. Which two are you thinking of? Uh, Oh Children and Shadow Age. Awesome. Let's do Shadow Age last. Okay. Is Oh Children really not making music anymore? Yeah. Uh, the singer Toby is now working on a solo project called Okandi. Um, do Oh Children last. Okay. Well, then the then we're going to play Shadow Age next. Uh, this is a band out of Richmond, Virginia. It is a duo. And I think that I'm going to play their track, Scylla Look, off of their uh, EP of the same name. So, whoops. Wait, what? Which huh? one? What? What track? Scylla Look. That's not on their Shadow Age uh, album. No, it is off of... Oh, Scylla Look, the from, single from, May from 2015. 2015. And I believe that this band broke up last year. I they broke up immediately after they released their album from September 2018. They So it was about um, the beginning of... January, I'd say January 2019, they broke up. Yeah. I had such high hopes for them. It was a sad day. Yeah. Okay. It was. So, please enjoy. Still a look. Still a look. This sounds like something that she passed away. <laughs> Title. <laughs> By Shadow Age. Sorry. I'm dumb. Just take a
now it's stopped. <laughs> I know I can prevent it from doing that. My bad. So that was Shadow Age. Still a look. Um, yeah, which they sound like another Richmond band I can think of, but... They are, um, as we said, no longer together, just like this next band, O Children, um, which they unfortunately are no longer making music as well, but the singer Toby is making music under a solo project called Okandi, um, and I'm going to play Ruins, which honestly is their most cliche track, but it's also one of their best tracks, and I think Mouse is trying to speak, but she's muted. Ah, there you are. Hello. Armpits. Did you say armpits? I said armpits. Of course I did. Um, o Children is named after um, a Nick Cave song. O Children. Yeah. So, all right. Let it rip. All right. Ruin.
Children with Ruins off of their self-titled debut, O Children, which came out um, in October of 2010. So a very long time ago, like, uh, at this point. Um, and honestly, like, I am sad that they're no longer making music because I, I really love Toby's voice. It sounds unlike anything else I know. So, well, maybe the new Toby project will be awesome. I have not listened to it yet, which is why they are not included in in this. Um, I have been focused elsewhere. But um, I honestly have no idea how many um, how many tracks we played, but this was like a fun thing to do. I thought so. It was like a radio. And I like how when the song is ending, you're like, all right, and that was blah, blah, blah. Just like a real radio. Yeah, the only difference is we don't have, like, a super fun, obscure fact to go with every track. We could. I tried to come up with them. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I mean, you know, we're <laughs> but this making was, this, this up. Was, this was a lot of fun. I hope we we do more of this. We should have, like, a theme for every week and just, like, dump shit into it. Yeah, we could. We can give the news and then have, like... Like a 45-minute set. Yeah. Just play in band camp. Uh, yeah, that's that's actually essentially um, what I was doing there was I was just playing tracks off of my band camp. <laughs> Not even fancy DJing that shit. Just click. <laughs> right. So that actually wraps up our episode for this week. Um, and that means that we have hit the point in the show where we like to thank our Patreon supporters who help make all of this possible um, rather than reading the whole list, we read everyone who donates um, $10 or more per month. Uh, so starting at the top, um, I will be reading them because Mouse doesn't actually have the list. Actually, I can solve that. No, you can send them to me. <laughs> I can I can just screen cap this shit and send it to you. Oh, my God. Yes! We have the Yay, technology. technology! Holy shit. I forget that technology is a thing sometimes. See, this is, okay, as much You're like, how as, am I going to get this piece of paper to mouse? So as much as I, um, you know, enjoy recording with you in person, I also kind of really like not having to go anywhere. I do! This is great. Yeah, so... And you don't even know if I'm wearing pajamas or maybe I'm not wearing pants I don't know if you're wearing pants or not. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We should, we should stream from bed. We should just, like, lean back in bed and have, like, pillows and cats. <laughs> okay. There's got to be a way to make it elegant. Let's do that. Well, I sent you the list. You'll have to make it... You have, you have to make it big and zoom in. Uh, but I'm going to start at the top. Thank you, David. Mouse. Thank you, Hey Shaker. It's so <laughs> not big enough. You can zoom I'm in. sorry. I'm not ready. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Demetria. Thank you, Libby. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Skullgirl. Thank you, Mason Shiver. Thank you, Poe's daughter. Thank you, I Am Ruin. Thank you, Meadow Synth. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Two Broke Goths. Thank you, Sybaris. Thank you, Uncle Fester. Thank you, Max Shrek. Thank you, Dea. Thank you, Cadaver Kelly. Um, so, Whoa. yeah, lo, like, it's, it's, it's amazing. I love it. Um, I think that, um, I think that, that just about wraps up for this week. Hopefully we found a fun new format to play around with uh, now that we are a little bit more energized and not so brain dead, even though, to be honest, I'm working like 11 hour days right now, which blows. But you know, whatever. Uh, so thank you for joining us and we hope to see you all next time. Goodbye.